In my GCSEs, I got eight nines, an eight and a six. And today I'm gonna to go over the three step framework that I use to get these grades and how you can do the same. I'm gonna give you an in detail look at how I got these grades and beat every other boy in my year so that you can do the same. There's gonna be practical steps as well. I'm gonna tell you exactly what I did and how you can do it as well. It's dead simple. So if you follow along with this video, you're gonna be set for your exams. So the first step in the three step framework is having the right mindset. I know this is one that you might want to skip because, oh, it doesn't really matter, but trust me, if I didn't have kind of like the mindset I'm going to discuss with you in a minute, I would not have got these results. I used the tools and strategies that we're about to discuss to skyrocket my revision, to give myself that mental push that I needed to actually get the work done. And so the right mindset can be broken down into two aspects, and that is competition and obsession. So if you're unaware, your exams are a competition. The way that they set grade boundaries is based on how everyone in the country performed that year. So for me, I outperformed most people on average which is why I got the highest grades. So your exams are a competition and you need to treat it like one. But this is a little bit different to how you might do it in a sport, for example. So I've done martial arts for a while, when I'm in a fight, that's when I'm bringing out my competitive element. I'm looking at this guy, I'm like, yeah, I want to beat you, I'm better than you. And that competitive edge can help you in the fight. We're going to use the same process, but in a non-violent, like aggressive, loud way. So you can actually use this strategy when you're in a classroom, when you're at home revising, to give yourself an extra psychological boost. So if you feel and tired the night before, you don't want to do it, you know, you feel procrastination coming in, you can smash through that wall. So a really good example of how I use this recently, I was in the gym a couple of days ago, I'm doing leg press, I'm midway through a pretty horrible legs workout, I'm, I'm, everything is burning, I've hit new PRs on leg press, I've just done four sets of heavy weight, 15 reps, I don't want to do it. I'm blasting bonk music in an attempt to get myself motivated, I'm putting on the David Goggins <laughs> motivational speech and this guy walks into the gym and I've seen him around a couple of times and I'm going to be honest, but he's got a better physique than me and I'm a bit jealous of it. So I look at this guy, he doesn't know I'm looking at him, but I look at him and I think, yeah, I can, I can do it better than you. I can, yeah, I, can, I can get a better physique than you. I will be better than you. And you might say this is kind of like ego, but hear me out on this one. The moment I started competing with this guy in my head, you know, he didn't know, he probably didn't even know I was looking at him. But the moment I put myself in competition, my willpower skyrocketed. Suddenly I went from doing kind of like half assed rep, I'm doing it really slow, that's burning my thighs, my legs are shaking, it's so hard with the effort, but I'm putting out so much, I'm looking at this guy straight in the eyes, and I'm thinking, I'm better than you, I will do more than you. And by the time I knew it, I'd done all my sets, I'd done three back to front on each leg, and I was feeling amazing. Suddenly, all the fatigue had gone, all the tiredness had gone, all the laziness had gone, I channeled all my energy. So this kind of level of competition and drive, you can really use to take your performance to the next level. When I was in the exam period, I did use this. So maths in particular, I was struggling with. I was starting at seven and I wanted to get to a nine to do further maths at A-level, which I am now doing. And my teacher didn't believe I could do it. Uh, straightforward, he just literally said to me, uh, with the grades you're getting, you're not going to be able to do further maths at A-level. I wanted to do further maths at A-level. So one of the strategies I used to enhance my performance in lessons is I would go in, I would look at everyone else in the room, and I would think, yeah, you know what, I, I'm going to work harder than all of you. I'm going to destroy you in competition. I'm going to beat the hell out of you. Not literally. Don't start kicking people, bro. But I used this kind of element of, like, I want to be better than you to propel me forwards. Had I not used this, I would not have been able to break through those moments of, I'm tired, I don't want to do it, I want to procrastinate, I just want to scroll on Instagram. Again, it's a competition. This gives you an extra edge over every other kid in the country. Because like we said earlier, you're not just competing with the kids in your school. This is the entire country we're in a competition against. And you have to find a way to gain these extra inches over every Everyone else. So point two of kind of the, the right mindset is obsession. Now, obsession gets a little bit of a bad rap nowadays. It's generally seen that you need to be balanced. And I don't think that balance is necessarily a bad thing if you go about it in the right way. When I say obsession, I don't necessarily mean the 3 a.m. wake up grind, you know, <laughs> that kind of thing. I mean, work hard, but also work smart. Instead of waking up at 3 a.m. to do 300 push-ups and then revise while you're on the exercise bike, go to sleep at a sensible time wake up at a sensible time, 
you need to sleep. For mental performance, when you're not studying, use all your other time for things that are going to contribute towards your exams. Things like meditation, eating well, exercising. When I was doing my exams, you know, I know most people kind of, they drop off at the gym, but when exams roll around, I was still going. I was going three times a week. Obviously, I do more now. I do kind of five, six times a week. When my A-levels roll around, I'm still going to be going to the gym five, six times a week because when I'm not studying, I'm still doing other things that are productive that are enhancing my mental state and ultimately optimizing your kind of mental state. I made a video about that last week. If you want to check that out when you're done with this one, it's such a key element that so many students miss out because they stay up late, panicking, revising, they're still kind of staying up late, they've got a messed up sleep schedule and they're leaving so much of their potential on the table. So obsess over this productive balance. Don't listen to kind of the hustle culture, but also don't swing too far to the other side where you're spending so much of your time just doing self-improvement things. You still need to be dedicating the majority of your time to your studying. But the idea is that kind of like the, the stress of studying you alleviate through these other activities, thus giving you a balance that's still 100% productive. And this does mean planning out your time and optimizing how you use it. What I would normally do at like a break and a lunchtime is I would go and sit with, you know, some people I used to be friends with and we'd just gossip and, you know, just chat shit. And we never got anything done. But I swapped that out, I started, like literally, the lesson would finish, I would stay seated, everyone would kind of look at me like slightly weird, like, what's Tom doing? You know, why is he staying there? The teachers kind of knew I did this by this point, but I would just sit there and, you know, I'd like continue with whatever work I was doing, I'd get something else out and do that. I'd eat in there, generally it's fine if, you know, the teachers, they know that you're in there because you're committed to your revision, they will respect that, don't worry. This was not only such a good opportunity to find some quiet time to get some work done, but it also meant I had a good 15, 30 minutes of my time to ask teachers valuable questions about topics that I was struggling with. So this gives you a great opportunity to get some kind of one-to-one -one time in, but also really maximize your time. Understand that for this, you're going to have to make some sacrifices. I sacrificed staying up late playing video games with my friends to stay up slightly earlier, working on my art. You're gonna have to take these L's and I want to prepare you for this. So be ready to be judged for this. You're gonna be seen as a bit weird. Not many people are gonna be doing this. But again, like we said earlier, this is all a competition and it's all about the extra inches you can get over everyone else because chances are someone else might watch this video they might go and try this they might get called weird by their friends oh why are you not seeing this anymore oh, you know do you not like us you know are oh, you being so weird what's wrong they stop you continue you've got an extra inch so when you go into the exam hall you know you did better and your results are going to reflect that so now onto the practical tips step number two is to make flashcards this is a simple one and if you watch any revision guide they'll probably tell you about flashcards but there's a specific way that i do it that leverages both science and experience to optimize your time so it was super simple i get my textbook let's say we're revising a level physics i do this even now with my a levels let's say i want to revise Newton's second law, forces, mass, tons, acceleration. I'm gonna look through this book and I'm gonna see that what is Newton's second law, forces, mass, tons, acceleration, right? So I'm gonna go onto a pen and paper. You're gonna be using a pen and paper for this, suck it up. And you write out the question, what is Newton's second law? And you write the answer, forces, mass, tons, acceleration. You go through all of this, or you see class notes, wherever all your information is. You do that simple process for every piece of information you need to know. You do it all on paper, and then you type it all up into your computer, and then you import it into a software called Quizlet. So to do this, open up a new Word document. You can literally do it in like a notepad app as well. It really doesn't matter. Type in your term. We're gonna use the Newton's second law example here again. We're gonna say, what is Newton's second law? And then you're gonna press tab. So there's gonna be like a gap between your text and then your, where you're writing now. And then you're gonna write forces, mass time, acceleration. And then to do your next flashcards, we might be talking about I don't know, conservation of momentum. You can hit enter and you can say, what is conservation of momentum? Hit tab, put your answer, rinse and repeat until you've got all of your written flashcards onto your computer. Then you go onto Quizlet, you hit make a new set, you hit import from like Word or text document, copy all the text you've got. We've formatted it like this so the software recognise it. You paste it in, make sure it's all kind of done it right. Hit create, I'm pretty sure, and you're done. So you might be thinking, why am I making you write it all out on paper? 
then just to copy it out on your laptop. This isn't just something that I did and it worked for me. This is actually backed by science. There was a series of three studies in Princeton University in 2014. And they had two groups. So they had one group of students taking notes using pen and paper, and they had another group using like iPads and you know, laptops and stuff. And what they found was that those who did pen and paper had significantly improved performance two times the results of what the people who just used the iPads did because it requires more effort. And so what we're doing is we're taking the best of both worlds here. We're taking the learning we can get from applying the extra effort of writing it all up by hand and then typing it all back up. And then we're also taking advantage of the convenience that technology offers us because Quizlet has this learn mode thing. This was free during my exams, but they've actually put a table behind this, which is it's a real shame. It's only like the 40 pounds. Honestly, I've literally just used a seven day trial for my mock exams I've done this week. Just take the L. So it's like 40 pounds for a year. And honestly, if you're gonna do A-levels or any kind of like further education, you know, we're gonna use the same method further on. So it's worth having it around. See, it's an investment into your future grades. It's a worthwhile one. That's a very positive ROI. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the learn mode. It's backed by learning science. And it's like uses like machine learning algorithms to kind of figure out you know, what makes students learn better. I actually find that the majority of the learning I actually get from like just physically writing it out But this helps you when you're closer to the exam date and you just need to constantly keep revisiting the information i would get up at like kind of six in the morning This is still my morning routine and I just go through the flashcards for half an hour And it would just kind of give this monotony of keep hitting it, tailing it in and it would stick so once we've done this, we've mastered the content, we move on to step three And step three is past papers. There's two reasons why we do this First is exam technique, learning how to play the game of exams and kind of the adaptation and mental callousing that this gives you. So for exam technique, you've probably heard your teachers talk about this. This is the idea that the examiners, when they're marking a paper, they're looking for specific words, they're looking for specific key terms, they're looking for, you know, sentence structure, paragraph structure. If you take geography, you will know that for a nine mark question, you use this specific structure where you do an introduction and then a paragraph and then a paragraph and then a conclusion. You know, stuff like this, this is what the examiners are looking for. And we want to master this because we need to understand the game that we're playing with exams. You want to make the life of the examiner as easy as possible. You have to put yourself in their shoes for this. If you have talked to any teachers who have been examiners, they will tell you the same thing. They have so many papers to mark. And because of that, if I'm totally honest, they don't really care about you. They don't really care about your paper. And they're probably tired from staying up late doing about 10 before, and they just want to get the job done and go to sleep. So we want to make it as easy as possible for them to give us high marks. So by doing these things, learning these kind of extra things, by doing the papers and analyzing the mark scheme, suddenly it's a lot easier for an examiner to give you the extra mark on the chemistry paper because you use the word volume instead of amount. And the English teacher can take one look at your essay and suddenly they know it's gonna be a good one because you've covered so many pages. So it's just this kind of fine tuning language, your choice of words, stuff like knowing how much time to spend on a certain question, how much time to spend on a certain section, all these kind of micro things about just being good at exams, sadly not necessarily getting education, but being good at the game of exams is what's going to get you those high grades. So the next one is kind of adaptation or mental callousing. I love this analogy from David Goggins, he's a retired Navy SEAL, and he talks about when we go to the gym and we do stuff like pull-ups and we swing around these big you know heavy things of metal the calluses are hands look i think i've probably got a few there i use gloves though so you probably can't see them and that's because the continual friction of these weights means that our hands have to get harder as an adaptive response and we can do the same thing with our minds by putting yourself through these past papers and by emulating as close as you can exam conditions you're going to be training your mind for these exams if you've ever done kind of any exams before you will see there are students who before that they really you know they freak out they break down they start crying and screaming and shouting because this is an environment they've not been in before it's uncomfortable to them they've not practiced we can avoid this pre-exam stress by preparing ourselves mentally for what's about to come and we do this by as close as possible emulating the exam environment so when i did this I would find the past papers. So first off, you, you literally just search. So let's say, again, we're gonna use physics because I just have a textbook there. Let's say we're gonna do a physics paper one. Literally go into Google, I did AQA for my physics. Search AQA physics paper one. 
and it will come up with a site. This will have like a whole list of different papers. You can filter it by the year. So let's have another one and do 2017. It's going to give you a, a paper and then a mark scheme. There are some kind of like adapted papers. Don't use those. It's not the same format as what you'll actually get. You just kind of want the raw one. Using the, so I've got Windows. I use the clock app to set a timer. I think it's called like the focus timer. So we're going to use physics. It's an hour and a half. So you put in 90 minutes into this. You can then just kind of put it in like your peripheral vision on the laptop, put on some noise cancelling headphones. So I've got these that I use behind me. Uh, these are the Razer Black Shark V2 Pros. These are quite expensive, so you don't really have to get anything like this, but I wouldn't even connect them to anything. I'd literally just put them on. I can't hear anything. And the importance of this is that it emulates the silence of the exam. The most you can hear is, I don't know, like the rain on the roof of the sports hall. And it's important that you don't do things like listen to music. We want to kind of refine this as much as possible. If you don't have access to a printer, what I used to do when I couldn't is I've got like a, a digital drawing tablet thing. It's a little bit like if you've got like a, an iPad uh, and an Apple Pencil, it's the same kind of thing. You can just draw on like a Word document. So I would plug that into my laptop and then use just write on there rather than typing it in, simply because the sensation of writing and the wrist strain you get from doing long history papers and stuff like that, it's more realistic and you need to be able to prepare yourself for these problems that are going to come up so that when they do happen, you know how to deal with them. I prepared long and hard for my history exams, not just in content, but also in praxis, because when I did my actual history exam, I knew it was gonna be two, two and a half hours, and that's a lot of writing. I'm pretty sure I got repetitive strain injury from how hard I was writing in that exam, but I was prepared for that, and you need to be too. Again, this last section is all about giving you an extra edge over the competition. If you know what the examiners are looking for, if you know how to make their life easier, if you're ready to go into that slightly uncomfortable exam environment, again, suddenly, you're just levels above everyone else. So scheduling all this in, this is what my schedule looked like over my exam period. You can see I'm kind of doing one set of flashcards a day, normally kind of the, the past paper that I'm about to do, kind of one or two past papers a day. So I'm actually not doing loads of revision in terms of volume. What I am doing is that I'm maximizing my time because this is hard and I'm doing the things that I know work. So I can spend the rest of my time recovering for the next day. In terms of actually executing this, this was my routine at the time. I'll show you the one that I've got now. I think it's a bit better. I'm gonna do a whole separate video on like routines and stuff like that at the time, because we could be here forever talking about that. But generally, like we were saying in part one, make your productive balance. Actually, in the week of exams, I would more or less every day go out with a friend in the evening, we'd go for a nice walk around the meadows. It was great because I'm getting kind of like a boost of being in a green space. I'm getting the boost of being with a friend, but I'm not doing that in the same way that I used to, where I'd stay up late playing video games where I'm messing up my sleep and I'm not actually really getting the benefit of social time because I'm not seeing them. So make the schedule that works for you. Again, if you're looking for kind of inspiration or sort of like habits to include, check out my last video. I'll just put it in the little i card up there so you can check that out when you're done watching this. So just to recap, make sure you are competitive and obsessed, not in a way that's going to hurt anyone else, but lets you power through mental barriers. Make all your study sets by writing them down and then typing them out. Practice past papers like there's no tomorrow and try and make it as realistic as possible and make sure your schedule covers all your bases for health and well-being to optimize your mental performance for the actual exams. But I just want to remind you that this is not all about talent. I wasn't the most talented student in my maths class, but I was able to exceed those who are more talented than me with work ethic. And you're now equipped with all the tools you need to achieve the highest grades possible for you. At the end of the day, all it is, is blood, sweat and tears. So if you found this valuable, make sure you're subscribed for when that new video about routines comes out. If you thought it was good, give it a like. If there's any of your friends that are doing GCSEs at the moment, they might find this valuable, make sure to send it to them. Click and watch this video right now, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.